Hey everyone. I wanted to make this video to talk to you a little bit about my books. If you came out to the Irish festivals these, this summer, um, I may have told you about my books, but many of you couldn't make it and maybe would appreciate hearing a little more about them. So I'm going to start with Bridget of Ireland. Um, my fiction series, my Daughters of Ireland series, is based on legends set uh, 5th to 6th century. And this one is the first of the series. It's about St. Bridget. Well, she wasn't a saint um, in this story. It's her early life. She was a, born a slave to her father, and she got her freedom and she went to find her mother, who was also a slave to her father, who had been sold away. And this is about her adventure across the wild landscape of Ireland to find her mother and then what happens after that. So after I wrote this book, so many people said to me, but what happened to the bad guy? We wanted to hear the rest of the story. It didn't feel like it was the whole story. So I wrote, Pages of Ireland, which is the sequel. Um, at the festival, I had a few people want to buy this one, and I had to tell them that it is book two. And while you won't be confused if you read it by itself, it'll really be better if you read Bridget first. But this continues the story. Um, <clears throat> and this has to do with books being rare treasures as they were. Uh, historically at that time period in Ireland and um, books just seemed to not only be um, treasures but they had some kind of magical powers too. I had read this um, old story it came from an ancient manuscript about an ancient manuscript that had been stored not stored but had been dunked in cattle troughs because um, the people believed the words had so much power that it could be good for their cattle to make them healthy and fertile. And so they put the books in the cattle troughs of water and the book survived. And so that kind of inspired me to think, what did, what did people at that time think about books? Why were they so important? And do words actually have power and um, a sense of magic about them? So this also uh, lets you know what happens to the bad guy, like I said, from Bridget. And the St. Bridget's Cross um, figures significantly in this story. The third book in this series is Anya's Son. Um, her, this is the mother of Columkill, St. Columkill, the, or St. Columba, the third patron saint of Ireland. It's his story, his mother's story, and her name was Anya, and the way it was spelled, I didn't want to trip people up with that spelling, so I spelled it this way, which is why so many people are saying Inya because of the singer, Inya. However you want to say it, it's perfectly fine. But this is an audiobook now, if you'd like to hear an Irish speaker. She does a fabulous job with it. Um, Bridget is also an audiobook, and pages will soon be, um, I just, I have to review the files, but the uh, producer has finished that one. So if you like audiobooks, this ser whole series will be available soon. And um, this book really explores um, a mother who um, has to uh, let her son go pretty much like all mothers do except this is a little different because this we're talking about this saint the saint who saw angels in the clouds in his uh, his beautiful area around Donegal where he where he settled in and uh, opened so many monasteries there 
And if you've heard of St. Columba, you know that he established Iona, which is off the coast of Scotland. But there's a reason why he went there and he left his beautiful Ireland. So this is that story, Anya's son. That's the fiction series that I have available now. I, um, I have another fiction series that some of you have read or maybe have heard of, the Ellis Island series. The first two books of that um, excuse me, are, are out of print, but they are, they are available as eBooks. The third one is one that I produced myself, uh, Sophia's Tune, that's available in print and eBook. It's about immigrants who came through Ellis Island. So the next book I'm going to tell you about is The Roots of Irish Wisdom. This is history from that same time period that I wrote the Daughters of Ireland series and thought I learned so much about the the history of that early Christian period in Ireland that I put it down in um, this little book and the cover is down Patrick Cathedral it's a picture that um, I took when we were there in April of 2013 Um, this book, Celtic Song, is a little bit different from the other books that I've written, but it's something that I started a long time ago, and then I got fiction contracts, and it took me a while to get back to it, but I really enjoyed exploring the uh, traditions in all of these Celtic countries, why song, poetry, the rhythm of the Psalms, why all of that was so important and what that means. It also talks, looks a little at the instruments, the ancient instruments, and um, a few of the old songs. If you're looking for sheet music, this is not what this is. This is more of, of a history book. This book, Finding Your Irish Roots, is a collection of genealogy articles that I had written over the years for genealogy magazines. Um, on, on Irish, Irish research and on Scotch-Irish research. So it, it can be difficult to get started. There can be uh, roadblocks, but there are some sources maybe they hadn't thought of. And so that's what this is. And also something different that I have done, and maybe I'll do another one, but this is a devotional. It's a 40-day devotional um, in the Celtic Christian tradition. So it's a little bit different um, than other devotionals that you may have read. And this one I suggest that you do in the evenings. And the reason that I suggest that is because that's how the Celts recognized the day. So if um, St. Bridget's Day would start the evening before at sunset. Um, all of their, all of the pre-Christian observances started at sunset. And that's a time of quiet and reflection on the day. And that's why I wrote it like this. Um, I'll tell you, it, there are sections in it. There's the, the first part, um, travel, and you can see that I have evening one, then it's devotional, um, structure like a devotional with a prayer, a, a, a verse, a reflection and a prayer at the end. And they are not long. So if you're tired at night, it won't keep you up too long. Um, also, I put a challenge in because I think once you have this reflection, then you need to, to ask yourself, what do I, what do I, what's the takeaway from this? What, what do I do now? So that is Celtic Wanderings. I also told people that came to my table that this is also a picture I took in Ireland in uh, 2010. It is along the, uh, somewhere on the north to northwest coast. I can't remember exactly where it was, but it's where we saw rainbows. And 
we saw so much sunshine, we did not see many rainbows. You can just barely see the rainbow. You can see it on the back here too. Um, and there is a significance in, in the fact that I saw this rainbow on the day that I did because it was the day that I learned that my dad passed away. So that picture is very, very important to me. Um, the newest thing I had at the festival are these journals. And it's kind of difficult to tell if you go on Amazon, you're only going to see the cover. But um, these little bookmarks I put on here, so you only get those if you order it from me. I have different, different charms, um, Tree of Life charms, uh, little swirls, a couple of little very, very tiny St. Bridget crosses, um, and just some different, they're all a little different. So I want to show you this so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Um, that's the title page. And then it's a guided journal because it has some writing prompts, like the, this is the first page, beginning. And so there's a little uh, prompt there to get you started. Then there's blank pages for you to fill in, however, you would like like you do with any journal um, but I have several of these little prompts and I made the pages all a little different so you can see the design is a little different for each prompt in here this one is is celebrate and you can see the pages in it are a little different but they're all lined because for me it's easier to write if it's lined um, here's the clada talks a little bit about this the uh, significance of the clada and then those pages all have this on them and oh, after that here is one of the prompts and then the pages a little different One on prayer. And then those pages. Like that. Several blank pages like that. And I did not put lines on these pages because imagine and dream some people might want to draw or paste something in there but you could draw your own lines if you prefer to do that and then the last section about finishing well and those pages look like this and then i left a couple of pages at the end if you had more reflections you wanted to put in your journal. This could also be used as a travel journal. Um, it's hardback, so it's very sturdy. And this photograph is one that I took this past April in 2023 at uh, Innis Keltra, which was one of the stops that I liked the most. A small island in, in um, Loch Nigg and the at the Shan near the Shannon River in County Clare. It's it's not touristy. It was very um, peaceful, beautiful, and you know, thousand year old ruins that you could look at close. So so that's my Celtic Path journal. Um, I have all of these books available. Go to my website, cindyswriting.com, C-I-N-D-Y-S, the word writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, 
www.thebeautyshop.com and there is an online store where you can order them. I'd be happy to autograph them any way you'd like. So thanks for listening.